20th annual NCAA Women's College World Series promises to be one of the best ever. Unprecedented series coverage begins with game one next. To take home the title requires something extra. The ability to make the big plays. To sit someone down or take someone deep. To take home the title requires emotion and energy. Surviving five days of tough competition. Celebrating every victory. Agonizing over every loss. At the Women's College World Series, to be the best, you've got to beat the best. The drama unfolds next. Welcome to Oklahoma City for the 2001 NCAA Women's College World Series. All weekend long here on ESPN and ESPN2, and our coverage kicks off with the eight seed Cal Bears and the top seed in Arizona Wildcats. Hi, I'm Beth Mullins, along with Michelle Granger and Michelle. The Cats come in the top seed. They've got the best batting average, ERA, and fielding percentage in the country, and they've also set an amazing NCAA record with 121 home runs this season. There's no one in this lineup that doesn't hit it out. Even their pitcher hits it out. Tony Mascarenhas has 22 home runs. You can't walk her because you're going to end up with someone else that's going to hit it over. Every batter's a threat. They've got seven players in double figures in home runs this season. Matching that power is the pitching of Jenny Finch coming in perfect 29-0. I don't know how they're going to hit her today. She hasn't been figured out yet, and it may not be the day today. Cal hasn't beaten her and uh, she's going to come in strong, power pitching. Well, for the Cal Bears, they are coming in riding an emotional high, a big come from behind win in their region final on the road in Tallahassee last weekend. Bottom of the 10th, the number nine hitter, Kristen Morley. Two out, two strike, double to right center, and Amber Phillips wheels around on a bad leg to score the game winner. And the Bears are in the Women's College World Series for the third year in a row. They've got a big stick as well in their first baseman, Veronica Nelson. Well, it looks like it's all about power today. Nobody wants to throw to this kid. She's got 88 walks, 41 of those intentional. She can hit it out anytime she's up at the plate, so she's going to be fun to watch. She's got 18 long balls on the season, and in the circle, 27 game winner, Jocelyn Forrest. This is her best season yet, and I think having some tough regional games is really going to prepare her for this game today. All right, the eight seed Bears and the top seeded Arizona Wildcats. The Cats get things going with one of the top leadoff hitters in NCAA history, Lauren Bauer. First pitch coming up next. Welcome back to Oklahoma City. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Stacy Pates. Beth, thank you very much. Coach Kendrea, you have such an amazing lineup with your batters. You have seven girls that are in double figures and home runs. Everyone can hit home runs. How has that really propelled you guys to a new level this season? Well, I think, you know, the balance that we've had throughout our lineup, um, normally uh, most of the time you, you have two or three kids that can hit the long ball, but this year it's been spread out throughout the lineup. But I think at this time of the year, you know, we really need to focus on just hitting the ball hard, and if the home runs come, great. Something else that you're very proud of is that your your mental approach. How has that made a difference this season? Well, I think this team's a lot more focused. Um, you know, in the past, I think we, we we've had some young kids trying to find themselves and and more of an individual uh, approach to the game. And I think now they finally realize what it takes to play at this level. And and I think they're uh, playing as a team very well, and they're much more focused and and being able to look at the big picture. Coach, thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you. Beth, thanks a lot, Stacy. The Cats coming in as the top seed. The Bears, the eighth seed. Here is their starting lineup. Nelson very dangerous in the four spot. And Morley in the nine hole, the hero of the region final with two RBIs. And she scored the third run in their 3-2 win against Florida State. Defensively for the Cats, a tremendous outfield with Giordano, Bauer, and Vandergeest. Collins makes very few errors behind the plate. Catching for Jenny Finch, looking to go to 30 and 0 on the season with a win here today. Well, Finch says she likes free swingers, and I think she's going to see a lot of those today. <laughs> it's going to be a great game. I'm going to look for her to keep the ball down, try to keep the ball in the park today. Paige Bowie, a senior out of Fresno, California, will lead things off. Paige has struggled of late. Just one of 16 in the regional, and just one for 23 in her last seven games. 
So she's looking to break out of a little slump here in the series. Tough place to do it against Finch and quickly falls down 0-2 in the count. Well, this is the first season that Paige actually has been here for the whole season for the Bears. She's been playing basketball, and her eligibility ran out, and so she's actually been there, and, and she's seen a lot more pitches this year. Finch mows her down, one away. But Bowie, one of two Bears that have also played basketball or are currently still with the Bears basketball team, and look at this heat from Finch. Looks like Finch isn't going to worry too much about going up today, right <laughs> over that bat. Great pitch. That'll bring up Holly and Duaneus. Well, the Bears obviously riding the emotion of the big win in the regional, but they also must have taken note that Finch's last outing against Fullerton in the regional was her worst performance of the season. So Jenny also trying to bounce back a little bit here today. Well, Fullerton's a tough team. They are great hitters, and they were on an emotional high being in the regionals, trying to beat Arizona to get here. And uh, they're not any slouch, so she had a tough game there. Arizona beat Fullerton 5-4, but Finch gave up a season-high 10 hits, a season-low four strikeouts, and was held accountable for all four of those runs against Fullerton. Harper down to Mascarena, scoops it up, two down here in the top of the first. Well, Finch is going right at him already. She's going up, she's going down, not saving anything for later. Absolutely gorgeous day here in Oklahoma City. A cool 60 degrees, but the players aren't going to argue too much about that. Usually it's about 90 this time of year, and they're fighting the heat. The wind, however, could be a factor, Michelle, blowing a bit in right now and towards, well, now the flags have moved and have switched Ooh. over. Now the wind blowing towards right. It's swirling around yes, a little bit in here. It's changing all day on us, I think. Now you can see how brisk it is blowing as well here. Well, if we're going to see home runs today, we're going to see line shots. None of those long fly balls. Candace Harper now facing Jenny Finch, the junior from Stockton, California, hitting 302 on the season. Beautiful outside corner pitch. Here's Diane Ninemeyer, 14th season with the Cal Bears. Tops all time in wins. This is her fifth trip to the Women's College World Series. Their best showing, a third place finish. Popped up, Mascarenas runs out of room. A new look, too, uh, for the fields. They have taken the roofs off the dugouts here at Donnie Porter Hall of Fame Stadium, a fantastic facility here in Oklahoma City. So it's a bit more wide open now for the players. Over in the dugout, checking out the action. Two and two to Harper. Andrade takes care of the weak liner. Three up and three down. Top of the first for the Bears. The Big Bats of Arizona coming up next. There's one name in the record books with a 29-0 record, perfect for the season, Lisa Fernandez. Jenny Finch is trying to go one better and go to 30-0 this year. She goes 1-2-3 against Cal in the first inning. And now the Arizona Bats, we talked in the open about how many home runs they hit. The top three in the lineup for the Cats have scored over 200 runs collectively this season. So they get a workout in on the base pads all morning long. Defensively for the Cal Bears, a veteran group. They were young when they came here last year. The experience has helped them all, including Bowie at short and Manahan at second base. Courtney Scott will catch for Jocelyn Forrest. Has a loss against Arizona this season, but 27 wins on the year for Jocelyn. Well, it's going to be a great game for her. I think she's really going to be coming out of the gates trying to stop him right away. Of course, I got to go with my Bears, but uh, <laughs> that's my cousin down swinging the bat. So if anybody's going to get a hit today, I want it to be Lauren. Talk about a dilemma, folks, for Michelle Granger, <laughs> a Cal alum who played in the Women's College World Series for the Bears back in the early 90s. And there is her cousin, Lauren Bauer, hitting 450. I don't know where she got that. Not from my side of the family. <laughs> Popped up down the third baseline, foul territory. Harper couldn't track it down. Bauer still alive. Well, we asked Lauren yesterday about how she would try and hit against you, and she said, I don't know if I would. I'd probably just get up there and swing at anything you threw at her. The problem is it'd start a family feud. I'd probably hit her. <laughs> Not on purpose, of course. 
Well, you've been known to play a little chin music, haven't you, in your oh, career? Oh, so. yeah, once in a while. <laughs> the top of this lineup, just so patient, good eyes. Very few strikeouts for this group. Pop back, foul into the fence. There's a look at Nicole Giordano. She, too, spent some time in her career in the leadoff spot. So basically a couple leadoff hitters. And then Erica Hansen, too, has some good wheels at the bottom of the order in the number nine spot. And Candrea has done that throughout his career, essentially putting another leadoff bat in the nine spot. And a strikeout for Forrest, a big one to retire Bauer. Noticing when Lauren got behind in the count, she started doing the running slap. Be interesting to see how many batters today on the Arizona lineup do that. Jocelyn's been going outside, which is what you want to do when you have those running slappers. They tend to come away towards the first base line. They're running already. Can't hit that outside corner, and that's what got Lauren. Now Nicole Giordano, the senior from Saugus, California, a 400 hitter. Just trying to put the ball in play again. Early in the game, want to get some base runners, start putting some pressure on the defense. This is a big weekend for Nicole and her family. For the last three years, her sister Janine has been on the University of Washington team, and they have been playing against each other here at this Women's College World Series. Mom and dad have had to wear a purple Washington sweatshirt and a, a blue cat sweatshirt. And now Janine has graduated, and so the family is together in their collective rooting for Nicole to try and get for the family their first championship ring and that would be a terrific story for the Giordanos as you see Nelson creeping in at first and now actually shading back a bit Jocelyn coming up with that rise she's been camping on that outside corner so far not a bad pitch trying to throw him off again I always like the chin music why not bring it in if you're going to keep setting up that outside pitch Jocelyn began pitching when she was eight years old. Mom said you can have a pitching lesson or piano lesson. She chose the pitching lesson. <laughs> Giordano can't leg it out. The nice throw at short by Bowie, two down. Well, Cal better not take their time too much on defense because they're going to get caught with their heels back. Arizona's got some quick runners in these slappers. They already have two steps on you. If you don't feel that ball cleanly and get it there, you're in a world of hurt. Nice backhand stab there by Bowie. And that will bring up now with two down, Tony Mascarenas. 18 home runs in her first three seasons. 22 home runs this year to go along with the 77 RBIs. And a certain All-America candidate. Not your traditional big girl coming up to the plate with no. those two. You see 22 home runs and you're expecting some bulk. <laughs> That's what a quick bat and a good eye will do for you. Terrific showdown here between Forrest and Mascarenas. The Cats 3-0 this season against Cal. And in Women's College World Series play, they are also 3-0 against the Bears, including wins over Cal the last two years. Mascarenas pops it up. Bowie makes the call. It's short. And the side is retired. Three up, three down for the Bears as well. No score through one. Stick around. You'll want to see Veronica Nelson at the plate next. Tony Mascarinas, the nation's leading home run hitter, pops up in her first at bat for Arizona. She'll have more opportunities at this Women's College World Series. And stay with ESPN2 tonight at 6.30 Eastern for a live Indy 500 racing report. Bob Jenkins gets you set for the 85th running of the greatest spectacle in racing. That's a live update from the Brickyard at 6.30 Eastern tonight. From Tony Mascarenas to Veronica Nelson. A considerable home run threat and Michelle, I would imagine Jenny Finch is going to be very careful what she offers up to Veronica with first base open. Absolutely. Uh, Finch had said she really likes free swingers. Veronica doesn't happen to be one. Big girls, big swings usually take a lot of junk, but Veronica, according to Coach Neimeyer, has a really good eye. In three games in the regular season against Arizona, Nelson walked seven times against the Cats pitchers. At the knees, two and one. To that's the sophomore from Oakland, California. That's what I like to see, that low and inside to the big girls. That's a hard pitch to hit. Nelson is rewriting the record books at Cal. In her first two seasons, she established 
new marks for walks and home runs last year and then rewrote those records this season as Finch once again keeps it out of the kill zone. Well, all our teammates tell me that uh, Veronica hits it out over the double fence over at Cal Berkeley's field. That's a long way out to the road. You're driving by and yeah. there's a softball. Let's see the offerings now from Finch. You got to throw pretty hard in order to jam. So Jenny really must be feeling strong today because if you miss an inside, you're in big trouble. Nelson rips that one. Still full count to Veronica. Usually you got to worry about where you park your car for most fields. You don't want to park it up behind that fence. You got to be careful di driving down the street out in Cal. Yeah, you never know. It's right by the football stadium, too, so you better duck. Duck and cover when you're going to a football game. Who knows who's got batting practice? 220 in center field. 190 down the lines. Inside corner gets Nelson for a called third strike. Second of the game for Finch. Great job by Jenny Finch. Kept coming inside, wasn't fearful of it all, jammed her. Veronica had absolutely no chance with that pitch. She battled and battled for a while, but just couldn't do anything with that. Can't get your hands out and extend to get some power when the ball's coming in on her. Really bottled her up, and now it's Aaron Manahan. Nelson over in that dugout. She'll be back to fight another day. Aaron was 5 of 14 in regional play, scored three runs, and had an RBI in that regional series down in Tallahassee. Finch is really establishing the uh, inside part of the plate today. Nice little screwball going on in there. Very difficult pitch to hit. Home plate umpire Brian Smith checks down with Herbie An uh, Harley Anderson, the first base ump. And uh, they say that Manahan went around, one and two the count. Fouls that one down the right field line. It is a field of 48 in the NCAA tournament. As we check out the officials, Brian Smith at home, Harley Anderson at first, Lisa Harvey down at third. In regional play, there are six teams at each regional, double elimination knockout, and eight teams are here at the Women's College World Series. We've got a double header this morning, a double header tonight. All the big names are here. Arizona, the defending national champions, Oklahoma, we will see next. UCLA coming up tonight. Oh, we finally see that changeup make an appearance. Beautiful pitch. A lot of times on that changeup, pitchers will slow up through their hip, and it's really obvious. Changeups do not have to be a strike left on that one to be effective. As long as you keep it low, you can get them to take a, take a swing at it. Nice quick arm all the way through, just lets it go. Low and outside, keep throwing it there all day. That'd be perfect. Third strikeout of the first two innings for Finch. She is looking strong today. The determination on her face when she's throwing. I don't think she's worried about the 29 wins per se. I think she's going <laughs> pitch by pitch and going right after him. Much more mature, both Finch and Coach Mike Candrea say this season, her junior year, as opposed to last year. And Candrea had a great quote. He said, Jenny is an active thinker. I like to tell my pitchers that the sign from the catcher is just a suggestion. I love that. I like that. Just a suggestion for all those catchers out there. <laughs> Coach Candrea said it. I just happen to agree. Why did I know you'd like that as a pitcher? Oh, you got to go with what you're feeling good with that day. Of course, Collins calls a tremendous game as the backstop for Arizona. And Finch is feeling it early. She's coming with everything. There goes her rise. We already saw the change up once. Going in and out. She must be feeling really strong with all her pitches. That's got to give you great confidence as a pitcher knowing that everything is working for you early on. Popped up foul. It just sets the tone for the whole game. That you're able to get away with more mistakes when early you're perfect or somewhat perfect. All pitchers aspire to perfection. It rarely <laughs> happens, however. Finch the junior from La Mirada, California. 2-0 and against the Bears this year. She threw a couple of five hitters at Cal, had 18 strikeouts, and only gave up one run in those two games in the regular season. Full count now to Courtney Scott. 
it's always hard to throw to catchers. Courtney's a catcher and they see the ball coming off the hip on a daily basis, so they can be really tough hitters to throw to. Payoff pitch. Yeah. That inside and low. Jenny Finch strikes out the side here in the second. Throwing the heat early. Meet of the order coming up for Arizona. No score as we go to the bottom of the second. Finch puts down the glove, picks up the bat. And we've talked a little bit about Lisa Fernandez with the 29-0 record that Finch has matched thus far through the season. And just like Lisa, also a very good hitter for this Arizona team, as you see the turnout here. The first of four games at Don Porter Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. 11 of the 13 games of this year's Women's College World Series will be televised here on ESPN2 and ESPN Unprecedented Coverage. Bringing you all the action from start to finish, the national championship game culminating on Monday afternoon. And one of these two teams, or both these teams, actually aspiring to get there. And it's four, five, and six coming up for Arizona to face Jocelyn Forrest, Linnea Manuma. 19 home runs, establishing a new freshman home run record along with her teammate, Mackenzie Vandergeest, who we will see in the Arizona batting order later on. That's amazing to have two freshmen come in and, and really perform like that. They both broke the freshman record set by Leah Bratz at 18. Bratz is the all-time home run leader with 85. And you don't need to be a math major to figure out that these two will seriously threaten that number. There is Vandergeese who hopes to get up later in the inning. She is fourth in the lineup this inning. Now, Manuma had a red shirt last year, so she's really calm up there as a freshman. She's a little more mature as a freshman, and I think just kind of takes it as it comes. You get a lot of nervous freshmen out there sometimes, but clearly you don't have that with Manuma. She draws the walk. You don't want to, this is costly mistakes right here. You don't want to walk the first runner on. They haven't had a runner on yet. Now you're giving it to them. How about the, the mental focus that Forrest has to maintain knowing there is no margin for error against this Arizona lineup and now we'll face Jenny Finch. It's not an easy thing and Forrest is really gonna have to pull it together and make sure that uh, she's able to get Finch. It's gonna be a tough inning. Jenny's a 323 hitter, the Pac-10 pitcher of the year, but obviously good with the bat as well. It's always amazing to me because that when a pitcher is a good hitter because of the focus that it takes to do both. I mean, as a pitcher, you've got to be totally focused on that job, and then you have to separate your hitting out. It's not an easy thing to do. That's why not very many pitchers are as successful to play as Jenny Finch. Looking to lay down the sacrifice there to try to move Manuma in the scoring position. Nobody out here in the second, no score. Finch pops that one up, Nelson is there, one down. Well, that was an attempt at some traditional softball there, trying to move the runner over, but uh, unsuccessful. A little surprising because it doesn't seem to me that Manuma would have a whole lot of wheels on the base, but. Game one of the NCAA Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. Beth Bowens, Michelle Granger, Stacy Pates here at Hall of Fame Stadium. On deck this morning, the defending national champion, Oklahoma Sooners and the Michigan Wolverines. And then a doubleheader coming up tonight as well here on ESPN2. Lindsey Collins, another one of those hitters in double digits and home runs. They're everywhere in this lineup. <laughs> she too lays down the bump. Forrest has to make the play to first, two out, but Manuma gets over into scoring position down at second base. Got that little sneaky bunt going on. Wasn't giving anything away, very effective. That gave Manuma a little more time to get over to second. Right number 52. Oh, that's, that's a lot of confidence, too, that Mike Candre is showing in his freshman Mackenzie Vandergeese to try and get the job done here with two down. There's another look at the bunt and the double clutch by Jocelyn Forrest. The freshman from Thousand Oaks, California. Terrific tradition of high school softball. Pops it up. Nelson giving chase will run out of room. Well, Van 
Xander Geist will get in another practice swing. Attending the same high school as uh, her teammate Erica Hansen, as well as one of Arizona's all-time greats, Amy Schellevold. And it looks like Vandergeist plays just about everything for Arizona, too. It's kind of like <laughs> yeah. wherever she needs to be. A little right field, a little catcher, third, DB, left field. But can she pitch? That's the question. <laughs> Probably doesn't need to, the way she swings the bat. <laughs> More than likely. There is the scorebook of Diane Neinmeyer, the head coach for the Cal Bears, hoping not to have to fill in any diamonds there for runs for the Arizona Wildcats. Well, this is a familiar scene for her. They see Arizona an awful lot. <laughs> Nothing new going to come at them today. Four Pac-10 schools are here at this year's tournament. And to a player and a coach, they all said, really no advantage or disadvantage. We see each other all the time. You just got to go out and and get the job done here this weekend. They do say, however, that the Pac-10 regular season does prepare them very well for this competition. They've seen the best pitchers and hitters in the country. Vandergeest, no problem there for Bowie at short. A walk, one left on, no score through two in game one. No score getting set for the top of the third. Let's send it down now to Stacy Pates. Well, Beth, earlier you mentioned the Giordano family, of course, Nicole, and I have Janine with me right now. Janine, for the first time in a long time, you're not playing against each other. You have since graduated. How is the relationship now that you're not playing against each other? It's wonderful. I'm actually the super fan right now. I've been to all of her home games, and I've been to a lot of her tournaments, and it's, it's a lot better. It's fun. It's nice to actually support her and be extremely happy when they win and not just have some kind of, okay, I should have won. You know, it's the kind of thing going on. So it's, it's great. Actually. Well, she says when you played against each other, she's she was the mean one. Is that true? She definitely was. She's a little more competitive than I was when she got up to bat and I was behind the plate. I, you know, good game. Have a good game, Nicole. But she's a little more competitive. She, uh, if Paul, the ball was in tight on her, she'd look at my pitcher and stare down. I'm just like, Nicole, we weren't trying to hit you. So, yeah, she's a little more competitive than I was in that. But we were, both it was fun. It was a good time to play against each other. So. Janine, thanks. Back to the action now with Beth. Thank you very much, Stacy and Jenny Finch facing the bottom of the order. Seven, eight, nine. Amber Phillips, the center fielder. A terrific story with the Giordanos getting to root for one another this season. Finch moving the ball all around on Amber. Amber's had a little bit of a tough season with injuries, but it's come back and doing great now for the Bears, a leader in her senior year. Pulling away from that pitch, it's hard to hit when you're trying yeah. to run. <laughs> Going to need a lot longer bat to do that two and two against Finch. Two two misses low, full count on the third batter so far through three innings. And there is Janine's sister, Nicole. All Pac 10 performer, third all time at Arizona and hits. And the fifth strikeout of the game, four in a row now for Jenny Finch, and in case you missed the first four, let's check out our tournament track, and here they are. She's just mowing them down, totally in control this game so far. Moving the ball in, moving it out, keeping them on their toes. When an unbeaten pitcher has all her pitchers working, that is trouble for the opposition, and there she takes a little something off and gets it by Michaela Pedretti. That changeup doesn't have to be a strike. It's that speed that's going to fool you. She stays quick through the bottom, and they're going to swing. We have seen in recent years, Michelle, here at the College World Series, that has become the most important pitch well, to have you, that change of pace. When you're throwing it right, it's hard to, it's hard to hit. you got to remember you're only 43 feet away from that pitcher, and you got someone like Finch, that ball gets there in a hurry. You don't have a whole lot of time to be thinking about it. She's racking up strikeouts today. Five in a row now for Jenny Finch. If you strike out 10 hitters in a game, Coach um, Ralph uh, Raymond from the national team, he's the coach for the 96 and the 2000 Olympics, always said, if my pitcher gives me 10, we're always going to win. We'll see if that holds true today. <laughs> she may get there in a hurry real soon. Kristen Morley. I kind of like that pitch a little low. I kept hearing that the umps were going to call a little lower lately, but uh, that looked pretty good to me. Of course, I'm a old and decrepit pitcher. <laughs> we think everything's a strike. Well, I don't know about decrepit. But <laughs> <laughs> now it is Kristen Morley. She may uh, have a secret to how to hit Jenny Finch in that region final when she had the game-winning 
hit the two RBIs to score in the 10th inning. She said, hey, they were pitching me in and out. I guessed out. I closed my eyes and I swung the bat. And it worked for her in the region final. Let's see if it can carry over into the series. Well, it didn't work on that last pitch. or on that one. Gotta keep your eyes open, babe. <laughs> Not what a coach wants to hear. A little luck is great, but gotta watch the pitch. Duaneus grounded to third. Harper lined to short. Those are the only balls in play so far against Finch with six strikeouts through the first two and two thirds. Throwing those outside pitches to Morley. Again, those lefties, they have a tendency to pull away. Low and outside, a very effective pitch. About time for Finch to come in, I'd say, though. Yes. Three out. Goes upstairs instead. Out of the zone, two and two. Kind of been using her rise as a waste. She's not bringing that into the zone at all. Again, I think that's an indication of um, the power hitting that we're seeing in college today. Not too many low rise balls. Down to first. And the home plate umpire calling it a foul ball, Brian Smith. Otherwise, that was an easy play for Manuna with the third out. Finch coming in on that one. We're going to look to see a little screwball action maybe coming away. I love it, Brian. Straight back. <laughs> there it was, the screwball. You were right on the money with that one. How many different pitches can a pitcher really have? Well, I mean, they, they tell us they've got eight or nine sometimes, but any more than four, and I think they're lying to me. <laughs> it's how many, not how many pitches have you ever thrown in your entire life. It's how many do you throw effectively How in many a game? can you go to in a, in, a, in a crunch time, right? And surprisingly, Finch really is using everything. You know, she says, I throw a drop, I throw a rise, I throw a change. And uh, sure enough, she's shown all the day. There's a nice, pretty drop, a little bit low, but again, looking for that low strike today, and it looks like Finch is too. Andrade, it's short. <laughs> not in time. Cal has a base runner. You do not have time in this game to sort of sashay out there. You gotta get the ball and get it out. The bases are only 60 feet away. You gotta make sure that you're getting rid of that ball in a hurry. Not much time. Even with the stretch from Manuma over there, not quick enough. You gotta charge that ball and get rid of it. A two out base runner now for the Bears and the official scorer giving Morley a hit. First hit given up today by Jenny Finch. Paige Bowie now at the top of the order struck out against Finch back in the first. And it's quickly down 0-2. I think that may have made Jenny mad. I she's think she's a little got upset. Got somebody on board. <laughs> she just came with the heat on those two. <laughs> she's not messing around. You know those pitchers. They can get an attitude once in a while. You get on and then you're going to pay. Three in a row went right at her. Yep. So much for the waste pitch. <laughs> you know, you jump out ahead. Generally, you want to waste one. You want to keep one out of the zone, right? Yeah, it was a little too to close. Look at. Hopefully, they'll swing at a bad pitch. That's a little bit better. See, she'll swing at something like that. All twos across the board. Two-two pitch coming up, two down. I love that Finch takes that nice deep breath before she gets on the mound. It's like a cleansing breath that gets her ready to go, blocking out what happened before and worrying about each, each pitch. When you see that, you know that they're prepared pitch to pitch and they're not worried about the runner or anything else that's going on. For the last couple of seasons, Finch and Becky Lemke have been sharing a lot of the pitching duties. It was Lemke that was the 30 game winner last season. And now it's Finch trying to get 30 wins this year. Pretty little change. Yep. Same spot came in obviously because there's a lefty there, but I love that spot. It's not gonna ever hurt you there. Nice and low, very effective. Just missed high. She's gotten to a lot of full counts here in the first few innings. Oh. This, I believe, the sixth. Cal hasn't been quite as free swinging as maybe Finch had hoped. She's uh, got to come just a little bit closer. Beautiful pitch. Absolutely perfect. 
Strunaway. number seven on the day for Jenny Finch. Cal gets their first hit of the game, but they leave one stranded. No score as we go to the bottom of the third. Jenny Finch, the junior from La Mirada, California. Seven strikeouts for Arizona. And Mike Candrea says her improvement has been fantastic this year. What I have seen is, is, is a young lady that's much more focused, that's much more intelligent, um, probably uh, feels more comfortable at 43 feet, feels more comfortable knowing the hitters. And um, the remarkable thing this year, I think, is whenever she's needed a pitch in crucial times, she's been able to do that. Well, she had the pitch in a crucial moment there in the top half of the third to get her seventh strikeout, second of the day on Paige Bowie. Well, she's just in total control right now. It'll be interesting to see if Jocelyn rises to the occasion and really stomps out those Arizona hitters this inning. It is eight and nine, and then back up to the top of the order for Arizona. Allison Andrade, the senior from Morgan Hill, California, Forest. Jocelyn doesn't on the count. looks like she's struggling just a little bit right now, not quite where she wants to be. That changeup wasn't, uh, the first pitch wasn't quite what she wanted. Too high. Comes back with an in. One and two now, the count to Allison. Don't be misled by the fact that she's eighth in the batting order. She's got 12 home runs this year including three home runs in six at-bats in a doubleheader against Fresno in April. Boy, this Arizona lineup's not a fun one. <laughs> what are you going to do with these hitters? Erica Hansen, bat in hand, awaiting on deck. You really have no downtime with your Jocelyn out there. I mean. Everybody's a threat, and you know when they're a threat to hit it out, and a one-run ball game oftentimes will uh, make the difference. One run, and and it's over, or can be. And with Finch in such command yep. right now, it's not looking like Cal's going to produce a lot. Nice little uh, yep. speed changeup going on there. Got that back under control. Had that high one earlier, and was able to bring it down. Just missed the mark. Looking real good. Two kind of two. Pulls off that changeup a little bit. Mishandled by the catcher, but makes the play. As Scott scooped it up, gets it down to Nelson. And there is one down as Andrade is retired. Here in Oklahoma City, Beth Mullins, along with Michelle Granger, game one of our Women's College World Series in 2001. And we are very excited about the field that is here. We've got the top talent in the country. Already is looking good. I'm liking these pitching battles. Maybe we'll see a little hitting coming along here, <laughs> make it a little more exciting. But so far, so good. Erica Hansen, the designated hey. player, ninth in the order to face Forrest. Jocelyn had a stretch of 88 scoreless innings earlier this year and led the Pac-10 with 350 strikeouts. Hey. And she is quietly putting together a pretty good pitching performance herself here against Finch and the Wildcats. Well, this is this is her best year, and you know, she's had a little bit of a sore back and maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Although I'm told that it's not bugging her too much, and I think the pain kind of goes away in a game like this yeah. anyway. This time of year, it doesn't hurt quite as much. No, the focus has got to be on uh, each pitch, an individual battle, especially with these Arizona hitters when one pitch can do it. 22 of her 34 pitches strike so far. Hansen swats at it. Two and two. Looking like she's camping on that outside corner a little bit. Not a bad idea with those lefties. Forrest spent a lot of time in the weight room oh. over the summer. She's really been hampered by injuries her entire career. As a freshman, it was her shoulder. Last year, it was her hip. She still managed to get 20 wins on the season. 
Well, I think that just shows you how tough she is. And um, especially with pitchers, little injuries can sometimes become big injuries because of the repetition of the pitching motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you really do have to take care of yourself and be very aware of your motion. We should mention, too, for Cal, as they face this Arizona lineup, which leads the country, scoring on the average of about eight runs per game. Not only do they have Forrest, but they have Nicole DeSavio. Both of them appeared in the regional, and actually Forrest threw four times and DeSavio three times. So if they have to go deep into the pitching order, they've got the talent to do that. Well, I think coaches are getting more and more comfortable these days with swapping their pitchers in and out. Used to be, I always thought they had sort of a, they waited too long. Coaches tended to wait too long. I think they have a shorter hook these days because they have more confidence in their entire pitching staff. They're not relying as much on one pitcher. Two to the count, Hansen. Scooped up in foul territory by Nelson jammed or that one. I don't think that one was supposed to be so high, but a lot of mistakes happen when you're pitching, unfortunately. You just hope you get away with them. Hanson, another one of those players from Thousand Oaks. She was 0 for 3 in her plate appearances in the regional. And how about this for a family feud? Her sister Vanessa is a student at UCLA. One of the top rivals in uh, college softball, the Cats and the Bruins, UCLA. Eight NCAA championships. Arizona's got five. <laughs> Strike three, the call on the outside corner. There's that low outside pitch that Finch was looking for earlier. Beautiful job. Jocelyn was able to hit her spot, catch her helmet, and there it goes. Strike three. A couple of strikeouts in the inning. Three on the day now for Forrest. And Lauren Bauer will step in at the top of the order with two outs. Well, we talked about the Cats and the Bruins. They had a stranglehold on the championship trophy up until last year when the Oklahoma Sooners broke through the first non-West Coast school to win the championship in 14 oh. years, dating back to Texas A&M in 1987. And that has really opened up everybody's eyes and, and hopes of all the teams here, Michelle, that anybody can now take this thing home. Well, I think it gives some other schools more confidence, but it's been a long time coming. I think when you talk to coaches these days, they all say the same thing. You know, the talent's getting more spread out. Yep. It's becoming more and more difficult. So it's no longer a guarantee that an Arizona or UCLA is going to win. Likely, but not a guarantee. <laughs> and you see the Sooners are heading up to the practice field, getting set for the Michigan Wolverines as their title defense officially begins here at the Women's College World Series. That's a 1.30 Eastern start here on ESPN2. The Sooners and the Wolverines. The second game of this NCAA Women's College World Series as Jenny Finch looks on. And Jocelyn Forrest responds with three strikeouts in the inning as Bauer goes down for the second time. No score, three complete game one of the Women's College World Series. Just outside Don Porter Hall of Fame Stadium here in Oklahoma City. A play at the plate. We haven't seen one yet, but the action's been pretty good so far. And a reminder that the men's lacrosse national semifinals will be on ESPN2 Saturday at noon Eastern. The defending national champion Syracuse Orangeman taking on Notre Dame. And then Princeton and Towson at 3.30 Eastern. The Fighting Irish and Towson first timers in the semis. That's Saturday live from Rutgers Stadium. It is two, three, and four in the Cal lineup to face Jenny Finch, who has struck out seven through the first three innings. Finch 29 and 0 on the season. Currently tied with Lisa Fernandez for the best record in NCAA history. Fernandez finished up the year 29 and 0 and leading the Bruins to the national championship in 1992. 
I think Finch just looks so commanding out there because she's coming inside like that. You just don't see that, that met with that many pitchers. Establishing the inside part of the plate, but it makes such a huge difference in your game. Duenas, the senior from Chula Vista, grounded to short back in the first inning. Dead ball. The call from Brian Smith as it popped up right in front of the plate. It's really hard to get your hands out when you got that uh, ball coming in on your hands. Can't do much with that pitch. Let it go, see if the ump's gonna call it before you try hitting the darn thing. One, two, misses away. Wayne is another one of those players we see so much in, in women's college softball. The versatility, she's played right field, she's played left field, she's caught, she's played third base. Used to be really that everybody had one position and you sort of stuck to yeah. that. But you know, with these, there's so much competition out there these days and depending on what your team needs, you need to adjust. And so a lot of players now have become very flexible. And that's great for coaches to have that kind of flexibility to work with. Moving people around defensively in the lineup. I don't think we've seen Finch throw that change at first strike yet. Again, we're getting that real low outside. Great spot. They're swinging. They're trying to protect against Jenny. Dwayne is one of just three players that hasn't been struck out by Finch today. Mascarenas cleans it up. One down. Well, she's having long at-bats and keeping her eye on the ball, but just not able to make anything happen just yet. We'll see if Harper has better luck. Candace lined out to short in the first inning. That was generous. I was thinking it was more of a looper thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give her the benefit of that. <laughs> You're so nice. There's that low inside. She is one Golden Bear that has had some success this season against Arizona. She's hit 400 against the Wildcats in their three regular season meetings. Grounded down to Mascarenas again at third, two away. Second time through the lineup, the Bears are starting to get a little more comfortable. Not, not seeing all those strikeouts right now. Getting the ball in play. Here is the work that Finch has done. A fly out, three ground outs, and seven Ks. And now the very dangerous Veronica Nelson. She struck out Nelson in the second. Finch was feeling pretty confident there. That was right there. Wanted to go after her, assuming I think that she wasn't gonna swing at the first pitch. Got a little lucky there. Nelson nails that one foul down the left field line, 0 and 2. I think just as impressive as the home runs and the walks for Veronica. How about your cleanup hitter? That strikeout earlier in the game was just the 15th time all year she has struck out. That tells you a little bit about the eye she has for the ball. Well, Coach Neimeyer mentioned that to us before, and it's absolutely true. We're seeing that. She's really disciplined up the plate, swinging at good pitches. Stays away from the waste pitch there from Jenny Finch, one and two. One of the only ones able to stay off that <laughs> bounce and change. That one line foul as well off the bat of Nelson. No reason for Finch to come in too pretty on her right now. Why take the chance? Move it in and out and see if you can catch her a little off guard. Down to second, Alicia Rebellio. First ball that's been hit to the right side today off of Finch. Still has allowed just one hit. No score as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Jenny Finch on the left has allowed one hit, has struck out seven. Jocelyn Forrest on the right has not given up a hit yet to the team with the most home runs, the best batting average, and the best scoring average on the season, the Arizona Wildcats. So two impressive pitching performances 
Absolutely, but you got to watch out. I think you just cursed for Jocelyn. That's, that's kind of the golden rule when you're uh, playing ball. Never mention to a pitcher if there's a perfect game or no hitter I, going on. Now, I never said the no hit words. That was you. <laughs> I said she hasn't given up a hit yet. All right, so I did. <laughs> and I'm a bear, too. Well, bear alumni. Now, Forrest, impressive. Hasn't been on top of every pitch, but has still managed to shut down Arizona thus far. And it is Nicole Giordano followed by Mascarenas and Manuma. Giordano grounded out to short in her first trip to drop her average just below 400 on the season. Jocelyn coming right in, trying to get ahead. Sometimes those hitters just don't even look ready, do they? <laughs> Nicole is just not even looking at that pitch. Already decided she wasn't going to go for the first one. Oh! Stacy talked to her sister Janine earlier in the game and her parents, Frank and Kathy. I'm sure they're excited they get to wear the same wardrobe now. They don't have to worry about wearing the, the Washington colors and the Arizona colors. Well, a lot less sisters. stress. <laughs> <laughs> a lot less stress. Much more color coordinated. Absolutely. It? Nicole right now behind Forrest in the count, one and two. Jocelyn was trying to go out again and coming in and up. Looked like she missed that pitch, but didn't hurt her. Slap to the left side. Bowie makes the play. Here in the fourth inning, Jocelyn Forrest, the tournament, uh, the tournament track shows us Forrest work against this Arizona lineup. Four strikeouts in the game. Jocelyn looking good, and this is not a, an easy job she's got today keeping those Arizona kids off the bases. Now it's Tony Mascarena. She popped up in the first. A little hard to tell, but it looks to me like a little bit of an off-speed going on there. Not quite as hard as some of her lower and in pitches. Mascarena's the senior from Garden Grove, California, one of eight seniors on this Arizona team. And uh, Mascarena says she's just going up there this weekend and having fun at the plate. Of course, it helps when you're hitting home runs and hitting over 400. You can have a lot more fun that way. Yeah, not a whole lot of stress when you're when you're uh, able to see the ball really well when you're in that zone, as the headers like to say. But the, they certainly didn't seem stressed out by the fact that this senior class is still without a national championship. And every class at Arizona has won at least one title dating back to the freshman class that came in in 1988. So it's 14 years that a class has won a title at Arizona, and this group badly wants to make sure they go out with one this weekend. Well, you just you can't press to win, and, and I think you're seeing some maturity in, in these Arizona players. Mascarena straight away, center field, Amber Phillips barely has to move for the second out of the inning. You got to have some fun when you're playing, and the hits are going to come. You just got to keep that eye and a nice quick bat. The more you press, the worse off it seems to get. So when you're looking down the batting averages of Arizona, it doesn't look like they press too often. <laughs> They're all hitting. <laughs> Very rarely do I ever see an entire team hitting as well as Arizona. Lene Manuma walked in the first, the only base runner that Arizona has had against Jocelyn Forrest. Got that nice little change up coming in. I always thought if you're going to come in, come in hard. That way, if you hit him, you hurt him. <laughs> Manuma, the freshman from San Diego, California. Her family tree includes her uncle Jesse Sapulo, who played in the NFL. Her father, 28 years in the Navy before retiring as a lieutenant commander. Out in the San Diego area. As Manuma takes a look at ball one, or ball two, excuse me. Got to test out that high stuff, see if they'll swing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those uh, power hitters like to uh, go fish. Well, can you go after the younger players a little more with those pitches as well? You know, you generally, when you get a really aggressive hitter, it doesn't matter what you're trying mm -hmm. to do. You know, they'll swing at just about anything when they're anxious enough. But uh, I think that just shows that uh, Manuma's not pressing at this point. Oh, 
Forrest thought she had it. Just missed. Look good, look good. Nice inside pitch. Yeah, that's Whoa. looking nice. <laughs> we got the replay advantage, though. It's a little bit different when you're sitting behind there. Well, we go from what looked like it should have been strike three and the second walk of the game issued by Forrest, both to Manuma. And instead of sitting over in the dugout, now she's got to worry about Jenny Finch with a runner on board. Well, better to walk Manuma than give her something really fat. The pitch before was, was close, didn't get it, and then was hoping to get her to swing and didn't happen. Finch popped up to first in the second inning. Jocelyn working the in and out an awful lot today, going slider and screw. A couple change-ups in there. Haven't seen a whole lot of drops today. Jocelyn seems to be able to manage that speed great. She goes a little hard, she takes a little off, then she's got her change-up. Makes it very difficult for a batter to settle in and really try to crank on one when the speeds keep changing on you. Little pop on that pitch, I guess. Yes, say. there was. Just missed upstairs, two and one. Had a little pop of the glove. Pitchers always love that. They always want the catchers to use the glove that really <laughs> pops. Two one to Finch. Pops that one up. Scott gives chase, runs out of room, two and two. A lot of room back there behind the plate to try to go get something, so. If you're mobile as a catcher and get that helmet off in a hurry, you got a good shot. Arizona trying to get something going with two outs here in the fourth. That one may stay in play and just over the fence into foul territory. Usually when you're facing a pitcher or as a pitcher, you uh, you either get revved up because you're kind of indignant. I don't want them to hit me because <laughs> she's just a pitcher. But uh, when you're just a pitcher and hitting over <laughs> 300, you got to be careful. Finch is old school too. He steps right in there with no, uh, no batting gloves, none of that bare hand, bat, going to work. Got to love that. Well, pitchers, you know, you can't have all those toys. Then you got to get out there. You got to put everything on, take it on, leave that to the catchers. They got the gear. All you need is a glove. Ball, well, ball would be helpful, that too. That helps, too, right? <laughs> Game one of the NCAA Women's College World Series. The defending national champion, Oklahoma Sooners, and the Michigan Wolverines coming up next later tonight. Stanford and LSU both here for the first time ever. And the UCLA Bruins, the two seed and eight time NCAA national champs taking on the Iowa Hawkeyes in the nightcap. Action all weekend long here on ESPN2 and ESPN, the national championship on Monday afternoon. Change up, gets Finch looking. Fifth of the game for Forrest. Holding the best hitting team in the nation. Hitless through four. Still no score of Mr. California, the second baseman, number 20, Aaron Manning. No score. Cal, the eight seed. Arizona, the one seed. And Jenny Finch and Jocelyn Forrest in a pitcher's duel right here. Looking like a great pitch. Doesn't even have anything to do with it. Just kind of sits there. Now Finch has got to regroup and come back out there and pitch. But that change up, great speed, a little bit of high. Good thing <laughs> Finch didn't try to hit it because you never know where to go. Got to stay warm and kind of cool today. 60 degrees in Oklahoma. Pitchers always like to keep the old arm warm. Sometimes you'll even get a pitcher if it's getting really cold, go on the sidelines, throw in between innings. Well, she hasn't given up a hit. Finch has given up one, but that was a play, a grounder down to short that Andrade just didn't make the play quick enough over to first base to get the out. Not a whole lot of offense yet today. Batters are coming through for a second look, so starting to get more comfortable. 
Finch struck out Aaron Manahan in the second. Sophomore from Tustin, California, has started every game for Cal in the last two years. And a tough job this year, making the move from short to second base, where All-American Lisa Ianson played for four years, graduated. I think a lot of people assume that's an easy switch, but it really isn't. The coverage on the steals, just where you're going, you can toss the ball, you're not going to be able to throw it like you throw from shortstop mm -hmm. over to first. It's a big adjustment to make, totally different look. Dottie Richardson uh, off the 96 and 2000 team when they switched her over to second um, had a little trouble in the beginning before she was able to sort of hit her stride. One and two pitch. Out in shallow left center and making the play out on the grass. Lucia Rebellion. One down here in the top of the fifth. I always like seeing catchers come up to the plate. I think they're totally entertaining. A lot of times, though, <laughs> they talk themselves out of things. You know, they're like, well, she's probably going to throw me this or that or whatever. <laughs> and they can be totally wrong. <laughs> OK, she won't. Lines it out to left. Nicole Giordano is there. One pitch for the second out of the inning. Jumped right on top. Noticing maybe a trend that Finch is trying to get ahead, as all pitchers like to do. And now the gritty Amber Phillips playing through injuries this year, including a dislocated shoulder, which still pops out from time to time. In fact, injured that initially in their regular season game against Arizona. And let's check in with Stacy Pates. Beth, you're right. Amber has been struggling this season, aside from that dislocated shoulder that you mentioned, twisted ankle, and God love her. She's also got shin splints. She's just trying to make it through the game. But she says this team means a lot to her, and she'll do whatever it takes to get through the game and help them win. And she did whatever it took in the region final. Didn't think she was going to play in that championship game and ended up scoring the winning run on that bad ankle and it had been raining all day in Tallahassee. She wiped out coming around third and had to crawl half the way home before she got to her feet and touched the plate with the game winner. Well, those seniors, you know, they don't want to leave unless they have to. And so this is your last shot. There's no red shirt going to happen here. So she's wanting to play hurt or not. Well, Diane Neinmeyer came to her before that regional final and said, hey, uh, we need you out there today. And she said, hey, I'll do whatever I've got to do to help us win. And sure enough, she went out and did it. Well, the Bears don't have a lot of room for substitutions, Coach Neinmeyer was telling us, a little short on the roster. Yeah. And so they need to get their best players out, hurt the, or not. The injured have to play. They really don't have much to turn to. We mentioned earlier the fact that they have two baseball players who, or basketball players who fortunately happen to be very good softball players on the roster. But deep down the bench, they start getting into walk-on territory. And it can be difficult, especially when you have a hitter like uh, Veronica Nelson, who's not really quick on the bases. You've got to keep somebody in there to run for. Amber goes down. Another strikeout for Finch. Now well, the K train continues to roll down the tracks. Eight on the day for Jenny Finch. Back in Oklahoma City, no score. Cal and Arizona bottom of the fifth. The Wildcats won their last national championship in 1997 against UCLA. Nancy Evans. At the plate, a big two-run RBI for the Wildcats as they jumped out early on UCLA. Bruins tried to battle back Julie Marshall with the thunderous home run to keep it close momentarily. But Arizona was able to open things up, and then Nancy Evans slammed the door. And Arizona put the finishing touches on a 10-2 championship. The Cats winning back-to-back -back titles. And that is the last one for the Arizona Wildcats. And a, just a, an amazing season that year for Nancy Evans, who would go on to win the 1998 National Player of the Year Award and is now an assistant coach with Mike Candrea. Arizona trying to get a run across here against Jocelyn Forrest, who has been very stingy. 
with those Arizona bats. Collins laid down the sacrifice in the second. Both pitchers today are working hard and moving the ball around. A little early on, Jocelyn didn't look quite as settled. Looks like she's really settled in. Looks much more comfortable out there. Trying more things a little bit later in the game. More change-ups coming up and in. Doing a lot more than just going low in it out and in for a while there. She was keeping it on the same plane, which can be dangerous. Lindsay trying to get history to repeat itself. Collins in the 1999 World Series against Cal hit two home runs. That helped eliminate the Bears from the series. Oh, she nails that one down the left field line, just foul. That was a nice swing, and there we go, that little power sneaking up on you. You gotta be careful. Keep that ball down, Jocelyn. Get that ball floating Ooh, up and it. yeah, just taking a real good cut. Pulled it a little too far. Hey, it pays to be lucky sometimes, <laughs> you know? All that is is a foul ball. No one's gonna That's remember right. that later. A long strike. It's 190 down the line. And Forrest rebounds quickly to get the strikeout of Collins, her sixth of the game. Coming back strong, Jocelyn makes sure she's leaving no doubt of what's going to happen and uh, gives her a nice lower pitch than the uh, long fly ball and a little bit to the outside and does the job. Now Mackenzie Vandergeest. That one in shallow left in foul territory and diving to make a tremendous catch is Pauline Duenas for the second out of the inning. Well, they haven't had much to field out there. She wants to do something. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch out there. Looking to get in on some playing time and makes a great grab. Oh, lays out full extension in foul territory. Beautiful catch. Able to hang on to that ball, no problem. Shows the, the blue that it's in the glove. That's definitely a keeper. Good emotion there from Duenas. Well, high five and you're on your way, <laughs> you know. And now Allison Andrade, who struck out in the third against Forrest. <laughs> Coming in. One of the um, stats that stuck out in my mind when I was looking over Andrade was the three homers against Fresno State on April 18th. Who does she think she is? Barry Bonds or something? <laughs> <laughs> Barry's been on a tear of late. Just missed out, didn't get the home run last night for the Giants. trying to set down Andrade for the second time. And slowly catching up to Finch in the strikeout department. She's been steady. Finch came yep. out of the gates with some lots of strikeouts, but Jocelyn a little quieter in her game mm -hmm. today, but doing the job. Jocelyn has six, Finch has eight. Andrade into foul territory. Mike Candrea found her in the junior college ranks, brought her to Tucson, and she has started for the Wildcats since arriving on campus. Every game, as a matter of fact, over the last two years, an all Pac-10 performer. JCs are a great way to go, especially if you aren't getting seen. It's hard for all these college coaches to see every player throughout the country, and, and definitely some of them get missed. They get a chance when they go to a JC to play, get some playing time, and show what they can do. He's been telling his seniors this weekend, make sure you enjoy the moment. Oh, the Love moments here at the World Series. Change up. 
beautiful pitch. Was starting to get that change up up a little high. Worried me a little bit, but that would be perfect. Nice and low. Just where you want it. There's another change. Line down to third. Harper makes the play. Five complete. Game one of the NCAA Women's College World Series and Forrest throwing up a bagel against the top seeded Wildcats. A pitcher's duel in game one of the NCAA Women's College World Series. One hit through five innings, Cal and Arizona. As we get set for the top of the sixth, game two will be at 1.30 Eastern. The defending national champion Oklahoma Sooners and the Michigan Wolverines 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific, here on ESPN2. Hope to be back with us again tonight. Michelle Tafoya, Tracy Warren, Ellen Weinberg calling the action, and our second double hair of the day, and a bloop single to lead off the inning for the Bears. Starting to get a little bit uh, used to seeing Finch. Feeling more comfortable up there. Nice cut, falls in. Great way to start an inning for the Bears. Here's what we call an opportunity. Yes. Second hit that the Bears have had on Jenny Finch. And this shaping up to be a situation where one run could make the difference. Got a little lefty up there. Let's see if they want to sacrifice the rope or put her in scoring position. Popped up in foul territory out of play. Kristen Morley. She had the other single in the game. How this? How about that for the bottom of the Cal lineup? Pedretti and Morley with the two hits. Well, Coach Neimeyer had said earlier when I was talking to her that, you know, during the season, we had a lot of steady hitters, but uh, in the regionals, and then she was expecting here that having some surprises. Help can come from all sorts of places. Foul ball, the call from the home plate umpire, Brian Smith. It absolutely amazes me when you can't get a bunt down. I think that comes from uh, Shirley Topley and Carol Spanks, two uh, Hall of Famers and <laughs> coaches I've had over the years. and. They just drum that thing into your head. They even bought, brought the old Granger out sometimes to bunt to show people, look, it's not that hard if Granger can do if it. If she can do it, anybody <laughs> can. Strike three called. Morley watches as Finch mows down her ninth Cal Bear of the day. It's all about the basics. And when you can't get the bunt down, you come back with that strikeout without putting the ball in play. Again, you're missing an opportunity. There's not that many we've seen so far. Only the second base runner. That could be trouble. Mascarenas has to try and make the play to first in time. Just getting Paige Bowie at first. Thought about making the play to second. Wasn't going to be able to get the lead runner. Well, as my son would say, holy moly. That was a close one going down at first. Boy, just a little more wheels and that lefty would have had it. Good play by Tony to come across and cut that off. Really nice play. Didn't really have the time to look to second, but ooh, that wow, was close. real close at first. So it's up to Pauline Duenas, who just made the nice defensive play out in left field to try and get the go-ahead run across. Well, Michaela Pedretti down at second base with two outs here in the top of the sixth. A sixth inning game. Well, we do go extra innings if we're still tied. Well, we got seven, and the Bears are starting to look more comfortable. Hitting is contagious once one person starts to make things happen. Everybody wants to get in on it. Finch looking to end the rally in a hurry. Misses low and away. Finch really needing to slam the door right now. Cal off, obviously looking to break it open. Not an easy thing to do with two outs, but a little base here, hit hill here will do it. Well, oh. oh. lays off. We saw Mike Candrea, the Arizona head coach, there just a second ago. He has 
seen this before. Last year, they came in as one of the favorites and lost their opener against Southern Miss. He wants to try and avoid that same fate this time around as the number one seed in the tournament. And a good eye from Duenas runs the count now to three and two. Real good eye. Those are tough when they're the right height, but uh, a little bit out. Good job to lay off on that one. Duenas, Mascarenas. Side retired. The Cats get out of some danger in the top of the sixth. One hit, one left on. One more chance in regulation for Arizona to win it. No score, Cal in Arizona as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Let's check in with Stacy Pates. Thanks, Beth. I'm in the Cal stands, and perhaps two of the biggest fans here at Cal are uh, the aunt and the mom of third baseman Candace Harbor. Now, Mom, you and Aunt Debbie have never missed a game. How special is that for your daughter and to represent this team, just being the biggest fans they have? It's very special. At first, when we were started coming to all the games her freshman year, she said, oh, you, don't, you don't have to come. Then all of a sudden, it just became, the whole team became a whole family. And um, it, it's like, if I would miss the national anthem, she'd be worried about me. So it was just, it's been wonderful. And she loves us coming to all the games. Everybody knows Aunt Debbie. <laughs> Debbie, because Candace looks up to you so much and she appreciates you so much. To see that their team is here when they weren't expected to be, how important is that also to drive this team? Well, it's really important. I tell you what, this team has a lot of drive. Even though we didn't do well in the Pac-10, these girls can play with the best, and they are the best. And, and we are the best fans. And I went and missed a game. Unfortunately, this, earlier this year, I had to due to a death in my husband's family. We lost my precious mother-in-law. But other than that, I wouldn't miss a game for anything. Well, we're glad you're here. Thank you both so much. Michelle and Beth. Thank you, Stacy. Well, Aunt Debbie had a good point there. Pac-10 sure is, is not an easy Easy place to play. We're gonna have to bring Debbie up here, get her on the headset. <laughs> Cal started out, they set a new school record going 32 and 0, and then six and 14 for a seventh place finish in the Pac-10. And yet they're good enough to be here among the, the best eight teams in the country against the rest of the nation. They were 47 and two. So that tells you how tough the Pac-10 is. They just beat each other up over there in that Pac-10. They're only playing each other three times now because of it. it used to be double headers. Now they're playing single games, which makes it a little bit easier, but uh, it's tough. This would be a huge win for Cal if they can hold on here in the sixth and then get something going in extra innings against the top seed, Arizona Wildcats. Hanson, a little blooper. That's going to be trouble. Falls in for the first hit of the game for the Arizona Wildcats. Breaking up Forrest's bid for a no-hitter. Better to be lucky than good, and that's a pop-up with some eyes on it. Pauling made a really good play, but just wasn't able to reach it. It's one of those spots on the field that nobody can quite get to. She just happened to hit it. Erica Hansen on board. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Arizona trying to escape the same fate that met them here last year in game one of the series when they were no hit by Courtney Blades in Southern Miss and lost the first game of the series last year. And now they at least have a hit on Forrest, now looking for the game winning run. Not really a way you want to lose a no hitter. You want to, yeah. if they're going to do it, you want them to get a hit. Popped up in foul territory by Lauren Bauer, the leadoff hitter, not getting the bunt down for Arizona. Again, back to the basics. You've got to get that bunt down and move that runner over into scoring position. You're not going to get a lot of triples in this game. The fences are too short, so you've got to get that runner over. Nice play by Courtney Scott. And now it's Nicole Giordano 0 for 2. Grounded to short and popped to short. I'm thinking I need to give Lauren Bauer some grief on that little <laughs> missed butt at the 4th of July celebration. <laughs> now be nice there, Cousin Michelle. <laughs> hey, we all have had our moments, <laughs> including me, so you know. What's family for if That's not right. to point That's out right. your faults? <laughs> That's the thing about Arizona, though. One person 
you know, falls down, then somebody else will pick him up. And uh, well, how that's ironic, the way a team is. How ironic, too, against two of the top pitchers in the country. We've got three hits in the game, and they've all come from the eight or nine spots in the lineup. And there is the potential game winner over on first base, Erica Hansen for the Wildcats. Double elimination tournament. The winner moves on to play tomorrow night on ESPN at 6 Eastern. And the loser will fall into the loser's bracket and have a very long day on Saturday if they intend to stick around. Well, I think Kendra should send the lone runner. I want to see uh, Courtney Scott try to throw her out. She leads the Pac-10 um, in throwing out 17 of the right. would-be Steelers. So, like to see that arm. Terrific arm behind the plate for Scott. Giordano slaps it out into left for a base hit. Two on board with one out for Arizona. Now they're starting to make some things happen. Giordano not looking to do anything too flashy, just getting the job done. Little contact hit there. Moves the runner over. Now we got some, some action at the plate. Well, a bloop single and now a slap single for Arizona and not the player that Jocelyn Forrest wanted to see in the box with bat in hand. Tony Mascarinas, a 400 hitter on the season. has had a phenomenal postseason for the Wildcats. She was the regional most outstanding player, hit 667, but she's 0 for 2 here today. Well, and here's the tough spot for uh, Jocelyn. Masqueradas oh. deep to left. Ends it with one swing. Her 23rd home run of the season is a walk off ball. One more Excuse inning. Excuse me, go. sixth inning, sorry. <laughs> the Wildcats going deep. Mascarenas, a three run bomb. 80 RBIs now on the year for Tony. Great hit. Well, I was about to say before that absolutely beautiful home run was you don't want to give her anything too good, but then again, you can't walk her. And unfortunately, Jocelyn missed the pitch there, and um, Mascarenas was able to take advantage of it and really had a nice shot out to left field. That wind has totally died down. It was up a little bit, but dang, you knew that was out when she hit it. Three-run homer for Mascarenas puts the Wildcats on top. I'm sure Finch took a nice big sigh of relief yes, over she there. Did. She's got a little cushion now, makes her job a little bit easier. And now Forrest will have to get back to work against Manuma. Beautiful changeup. She's getting that changeup down. It's very effective. One out in the sixth. Three nothing Arizona, the top seed now in front. Forrest whistles three of them by Linnea. Two down. Very important for Forrest to come back strong against Linnea. She's, a, again, a, a big power hitter. She's put her on twice already in this game on walks. And she needed to really uh, shut that door and try to uh, kill any rally that Arizona was going to start here because the Bears can still come back. They need to rally. They need to keep it within reach. Jocelyn needs to do her job. And again, beautiful changeup. Well, I want that pitch. I like that pitch. <laughs> Diane Neymar was telling us, hey, this team can come back. We did it in the region final against Florida State. We've shown that resiliency all year long. 0-1 to Finch. Waits on the change. Pops it up. To Manahan at second, side is retired, but Mascarenas and the Wildcats do the damage. A three-run shot for Tony. Three outs away from advancing in the Women's College World Series. Oklahoma native Mickey Mantle outside of the Southwestern Bell Bricktown Ballpark here in Oklahoma City. And a reminder that the College World Series is coming up on ESPN and ESPN2 from June 8th to the 15th, live from Omaha, Nebraska. LSU looking to defend their national championship and send Skip Bergman out a winner. And the 
LSU women are here in the College World Series for the first time. They are playing Stanford later tonight. Tony Mascarenhas is down at third base, defending now after hitting the three-run shot in the bottom of the sixth. And now Jenny Finch trying to close out Cal here in game one. Well, Jenny doesn't want to open the door at all because we don't. she wants to make sure that uh, she gets these bears one, two, three. Don't even give them any hope because a little hope goes a long yes, way. Yes, it does. Candace Harper, then Veronica Nelson, and Aaron Manahan scheduled up here in the top of the seventh. Candace has had an awful good year this year, hitting 302. Started in all the games. Nine strikeouts on the day for Jenny Finch. Oh! Called strike to Harper. Two and two. Well, let's see if she gets that 10 and make uh, yes. Ralph Raymond look like a prophet. Long fly ball foul territory down the left field line for Harper. Some fans giving chase. It's got to feel good to hit that ball a long way. Better to be fair for day. Yeah. <laughs> That'll loosen you up a little bit. Change up into shallow center. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Nice job on that change up. It was a pretty off speed, a little bit higher than uh, Finch has brought it. It's really not even been close to the strike zone, but slowed up on the release a little bit and uh, just didn't fool her. Able to get her bat out. And it was in for a hit. Third hit of the game given up by Finch. Harper on board, nobody out. Veronica Nelson in the batter's box. She can make this a one-run game in a hurry. Yeah, it's going to be, she's going to have to be really tough. Finch was saying earlier that, uh, that she respected Nelson's eye and that she was really good about laying off some of those pitches, the all pitchers like the big girls to go for, so. She's got to be real careful here. 18 home runs on the season. Nelson, however, 0 for 2 today against Jenny. But you know, you got to throw to her here. You don't want to put another runner on base. Yep. Bring the game time run to the plate. <laughs> Nelson fouled down the third baseline, 2 and 2. Struck out in the second, grounded out in the fourth. There is Harper over at first base. Tony Mascarenas, a three-run home run in the bottom of the sixth, has changed the complexion of this game dramatically. Well, I'd like to see a hit and run here. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not you coaching. You make the call. I'm a little aggressive, don't you think? <laughs> I want people stealing. Oh, Nelson looking to go yard. We've got a one-run ball game. Well, that's a heck of a hit and run. <laughs> that's a hit and job right there. <laughs> 19th of the season for Nelson. Not too shabby, I'd say. That's why so many teams elect to just put her on board. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. That's a bit of power. I think we have a rally. What do you think? Gail's <laughs> got a rally cap, and the rally cap's on right here. Still nobody out. Beautiful swing, and look at that. She's just watching it go. Well, we expected some power today. Took a little while for it to show up, but it has arrived late in this one. Three-run shot for Mascarenas. Two-run shot for Veronica Nelson. The superstars have not disappointed this afternoon in Oklahoma City. Pitch by Finch. She has to remember this is still her ball game. 
This is when that mental focus and toughness that Mike Candrea talked about really has to kick in. I don't know, but I didn't see the big deep breath from Finch before she threw that one. <laughs> time to, time for her to settle down a little bit. Nice pitch, keeping it in. Manahan lines it foul down the third baseline. The thing with you know the strong pitchers is you should be able to walk in a ballpark and look at a pitcher's face and not know by their mm -hmm. face what's happening in the game. And, and that's what we're seeing with Finch right now. We're not seeing any disappointment or anything like that. She's just going about her job. Although I'd like to see that cleansing breath back. Popped up. A little anxious, maybe her and her pitch a little bit. Foul territory. The count will stay one and two on Manahan. Struck out in the second. Popped up to second in the fifth. A little more drama here in the seventh than Jenny Finch anticipated. Coming in with a 3-0 lead and Veronica Nelson rapidly making it a one-run game. Had a little pop on that curveball there. Finch trying to get back into her zone. That one out of play. Wouldn't be a horrible time for the catcher to sort of break things up. I always told my catcher, don't come talk to me, but pretend you broke something and give me a little time. <laughs> you know, when a catcher notices like Finch is, is hurrying a little bit in between her pitches, she needs to break that up. Play with her mask or something. Hit dust in the eye, it yeah. all works. <laughs> Anything will work at that point. Anything that breaks her up, because when the pitcher gets on the rhythm and keeps getting back on the same beat back on the mound, it's easier for the batter to time the pitch. Finch in the dirt with that last one. Now full count to Manahan. Aaron stays alive. Forrest looking on. We'll see what happens if Cal's able to come back yeah. because Neymar has shown that uh, she'll split games. And since Jocelyn has had a great game and one bad inning, she's hoping see to get back out there. Cal scored two runs in the bottom of the 10th inning in the region final to beat Florida State, trying to come back from three down against Arizona in the last inning. Well, in the first two meetings, Cal and Arizona had two to one ball games, Arizona being the victor in those. And those are tight games. 120 the pinch count, 22 of those coming in this inning. That's a lot of pitches, usually around 100. Just foul down the third baseline. But we were seeing a lot of three and two counts all day today yeah. out of Finch. So, you know, she was jumping ahead of batters and then playing around quite a bit. Cal hasn't really been fishing as much as I'm sure Finch had, had hoped. Pitchers tend to like the free swingers, and that's what, what Finch had said, and she's not getting a whole lot of help from, from the Cal batters that day right now. <laughs> Oh, my. Shows some good patience, waits it out. A little bit low, but looked pretty darn good. Got to check out where that was on the old knees because <laughs> that was a close one. That was a little bit low. Good call, Sur I think, there by Blue. Surprising that you wouldn't swing at that, but a very good choice, obviously. Button laid down, Mascarenas goes for the lead runner and guns her down in a... Played down at second base. Andrade coming up limping a little bit at short. Must have caught a cleat there. Manahan trying to get down to second. Let's see with the cleat up. Oh, uh, slid really late. Almost looked like a meter. Uh, right into it, trying to take yep. her out, which is, you know, what you're trying to do, but sliding that late is not going to help anybody. So Manahan out at second, the first out of the inning. Finch, Arizona tries to turn two. Safe at first, Amber Phillips. Now that's when having a fielding pitcher comes in handy. 
Jenny Finch plays first base when she's not pitching. Very comfortable fielding the ball. Not all pitches are like that. Turned around on that ground ball, knew she wanted to get the lead runner, almost got the double play. Just a little too slow down there at first. The tying run down at first base with two outs here in the top of the seventh. Michaela Predretti trying to keep Cal alive here in game one of the Women's College World Series. Pedretti has one of the hits off of Finch, a single in the sixth. A Harper single, Veronica Nelson with a two-run home run, getting Cal within one run of tying it up. And Finch looking to close it out. Trying to come in with the heat. That pitch was right there, a little right past her. Change of pace, strike two. Finch has got to be a little more careful than that. I know she's anxious to get out of here, but got to play with those corners like she was doing earlier in the game. Wildcat fans are up. Pedretti fouls it down the third baseline. Winner of this one moves on in the championship uh, winner's bracket. Plays Friday night. The loser into the loser's bracket and will continue on Saturday. Yeah! The 10th strikeout of the game for Jenny Finch. And Arizona hangs on for a 3-2 win to open up the 2001 Women's College World Series. A great start for this series. A couple home runs, some strong pitching. That's the kind of game we like to see. Cal had the game tying run on base, and Finch strikes out Michaela Pedretti for her 10th of the game. And the top seed defeats Cal 3 to 2. Arizona moves on. We'll play Friday night in the winner's bracket against the winner of the Oklahoma Michigan game. And Cal in the loser's bracket play on Saturday. It's a nice way to end the game for Jenny Finch, who threw a strong earlier in the game. Mike Candre in the top seeded Cats with the win. Jenny Finch 3 2 over Cal.